Hi, folks. I am your host, Bob Geller. Welcome to PR Done and Dunner. I am super excited to have my next guest on. She's an accomplished PR pro, also an entrepreneur. She earned her stripes on Madison Avenue at a major TV network before launching and growing her own agency, which has become one of the largest and most successful area uh, agencies in Metro New York, an area where we both live. She's won numerous awards as a TEDx speaker, a fixture at industry conferences. This dynamic PR leader just wrote and published Brand Up, a book on personal branding for young people. I could go on and on, but let me not forget one key fact. We are friends, grew up right across the street from each other, and have stayed in touch and watched each other's careers over all these years. I am proud to say that I know it, no, and I'm friends with Stacy Ross Cohen, the CEO of Co Communications. Welcome, Stacy. Thank you, Bob. It is really we can we can say we are childhood friends, <laughs> and, and you know, and even I recall being at the same bus stop. That's right. It goes back a lot of years. I'm trying to think. Was it sixth grade or when did you move to Delaware? We we moved uh, from Brooklyn, actually, because of your your neighbors, uh, uh, mm. Sidel uh, Dick. My mom knew her oh. from Brooklyn, so we kind of oh. followed her. Okay, yeah. Wow. We followed her and so moved to uh, Delwood in in third grade. Third grade. Okay, wow. And how yeah, about we, yourself? We moved to Delwood actually, I think second grade. So maybe just a year before you folks. But uh, anyway, very exciting. You have a new book out. And yes. how is that going? How does it feel promoting your own book and getting out? To, and by the way, let me say how cool this is to our audience. For me to pick up our local newspaper, the River Journal, and see Stacy here, lovely picture, nice article about you. You're doing PR for yourself. Thank you. You know what? I I didn't even know that I was in there. So thank you. I'll have to send you a clipping me. report. Oh yes. Oh, that's so great. Thank you. I'm seeing you all over the place. You're on, you're on Facebook. I I'm love you. it. LinkedIn. You're you're really good. You're, you're getting some nice. Uh, Coverage. How's it going? How's the experience been? Has it's you, you know what? It's um I highly recommend writing a book. I um I think I always had it in me because I remember having a love of writing since I've been in fifth grade. Yeah. And um I remember actually in, in middle school when the uh the guidance counselor asked what did I want to be when I grew up, I actually said a songwriter because I love music and I loved writing. And so um, this book has a lot of meaning to me because um, I kind of fell into it, but it's really a lot of what you and I both do, you know, building sure. thought leadership for CEOs and business owners. And this is, it's, it's never been more important for teens to build their personal brand and to stand out in the digital age. So the book had a lot of iterations. It was actually first geared towards parents, but I could not be happier where it landed. Oh, that's great. That's great. I mean, so you think that's important for young people to learn about personal branding pretty early on? Absolutely. I would I would say that it is it is a requirement, especially, you know, both of us have two girls. Yeah. The college admission game has changed so much in such a short time. So now social uh, college admission officers, they are looking at teen social media and kids just need like a really strong online presence, a good digital footprint, and they are being Googled. And, you know, it's a good muscle to develop the same thing once they get into the job world because job recruiters are similarly they're looking at kids social media online presence and uh and and really important as a matter of fact you know one thing that cemented my decision to write the book is when my daughter was in high school westchester high school very competitive a lot of the kids 4.2 GPAs and as a marketing professional yeah. you know and very as you know very high anxiety for the child and also the parent and I just had an epiphany I was like wow you really need to market yourself now you have to figure out how to stand out how you're going to get to the top of a decision maker's pile and so that led me on, on the road to, um, you know, I'm a curious person. So I was writing for the Huffington Post at the time. And I was curious, are there any schools that are teaching 
digital leadership, personal branding. And around that same time, a bunch of, it's called the Harvard 10. 10 kids applied to Harvard and they got in. The acceptance rate for Harvard is 3.2%. Wow. These kids, because of bad social media behavior, they they got their admissions revoked. Oh, wow. So PS, I found a school, a, a private school in North Broward, Florida. Not only did they teach personal branding, digital leadership, they made it mandatory for kids in the ninth grade. And so I wrote about the school. The, um, the teacher that created the curriculum and taught the class, Jason Schaefer, who's a co-author of, of the book. Right. He, um, I think he tweeted, I, I don't remember exactly, but we became fast friends. And I have another co-author, Alan uh, Katzman. And um, we were just on, on a mission to uh, get this uh, message out long like just really really loud and interestingly enough when I was going to Florida on vacation Jason said Stacy would you sit in my classroom I know you're going on vacation but I'm like of course sat in his classroom I was blown away wow. like, totally blown away came back wrote another Huffington Post article about my classroom visit that article went viral and I knew I had something and that's when the book journey began is there some kind of teaching gig in your future? I mean, it sounds like you, you really know, connect. You know, it's so it's so interesting because, you know, part of, I think, also the reason why I, I am leaning into this, as you know, I'm a twin. And yeah. when, when you're... How's your sister, by the way? She's great. She's actually a teacher. She just moved from Santa Barbara to D.C., so she's teaching storytelling at Johns Hopkins. Wow. So we've both been awesome. in communications, which is that which is, is awesome. great. But she's more, you know, she's a PhD, very, very academic. And so I I really believe like and, and you as a singleton, you never experienced, and maybe because I know your, you know, your brothers are close in age, but growing up, first of all, we always shared a bedroom. And yes, we had twin beds. And, you know, there were a lot of like, there was constant comparisons and sometimes really insensitive yeah. remarks, you know, like, why do you weigh more than your sister or, oh, boy. or, or, you know, why do you get better grades than your sister? And I had one aunt growing up in Brooklyn and she didn't even know our names. I'm telling you, she would just call us the twins. So I think that also is like, for me, it was really important to figure out what made me unique what made me stand out and and be memorable. So that's, you know, I think that's a big part of, of um, you know, my story. And my TEDx talk was really about personal branding, getting an early start, but I used my twin story and I weaved it through the, the TEDx. Yeah, so I'm gonna include a link to uh, that TEDx talk in the show description and any other links that you think I should be sharing. Uh, obviously one to your book, but uh, the topic of the book is extremely relevant to what we said we discussed today, and that is the personal and company branding connection from CEO down to the line level, right? It's important across all levels, and they support each other. So maybe we can start with the CEO, and tell me more about CEO branding or executive branding and uh, how important it is and basically how that works. Sure, absolutely. I've, I've given a lot of talks about the CEO as, as a brand as, asset because, you know, here, here's the thing. It's like a CEO is really an extension of the company and he or she strengthens the business brand. And this is where you can have one plus one is equal to three. And we all know that the CEO, they've got to align their personal brand with the value and goals of the companies that they represent. But the other important thing is, I think we're in a period of that with, you know, I'm sure you've heard the term like ivory tower, you know, CEOs yes. hiding in the ivory yes. tower. It's so important, not just for the CEO, but for executives and for employees to, to humanize their brand. You can no longer hide behind the logo. It's just not going to cut it because people want to do business with humans. 
you know, they want to, you know, the saying they want to know, like, and trust you. So you've got to make that emotional connection. And you and I both know that purchase decisions, you know, are based on, on, you know, likability and, and trust. Yes. Uh, you know, the bottom line. They will have to know about you first. They have to know who right, you are. Right? right. Exactly. Exactly. And so the bottom line is, is that when a CEO has a positive personal brand, it really does impact mind and, and market share. And there's been there's been studies that it's very beneficial for the CEO and really for, for employees to have their own personal brand. And I also feel that when, when a CEO has a strong personal brand, it's really great to attract top talent and also to build strategic partnerships. That makes a lot of sense. Do you find that um, it comes more naturally to certain executives? Maybe some see themselves more as inside versus outside folks or, you know, public oh, reasons. Yes, yes, a hundred, a hundred percent. And I know that throughout both of our careers, we've worked with a lot of CEOs. Some of them just always want to be in front of the camera and others are, you know, they're more reserved and, and, you know, not so much, but, it's, you know, again, it's, it's like every person in a company, I like to believe, including the CEO, they have their subject matter expertise. And so you want to build out that thought leadership. There's not always that comfort level, but if they understand that this is really good and positive for, for the company um, on, on so many different levels, Bob, they, you know, they will, you know, I believe, uh, you know, I always say practice makes progress, that they will will be more comfortable in getting out there and humanizing their brand. Do you have any specific regimen you put execs through or any specific training? I guess it may vary by the executive. Um, it, it, it's, it's really customized. It's really customized. You know, it's interesting. And I don't even know if you know this about me, but my undergraduate degree was in human development, no. uh, you know, and then I have an MBA in marketing. So I'm really good at figuring people out and, and how to work with them. And it's, it's always about, how do I put this to you? It's like, I think there's a misconception also about personal branding. And I think, <laughs> A lot of CEOs or or just people in general think it's a little narcissistic and it's about like me, 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 right? Like you, you automatically like will think about the Kardashians, but personal branding is really what is the value that you bring to others, you know, and it's, it also, it has to answer the question, why should I choose you? And mm -hmm. how do you get to the top of a decision maker's list? Because there's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of clutter. And I think once I have that conversation with them, they feel more comfortable because look, it's, it's like, and we could see it on, on TikTok. There are just, you know, some people, CEOs on TikTok. Of course. And you know what? That's the I gotta biggest, get on TikTok. That, both of us. Maybe we can have the, the Bob and Stacy show. There are right now, and I don't know the exact statistics, but there are more people in our generation that are going on TikTok now. So it's the biggest growing sector. Makes but you, you could even see it. Some kids are just natural, right? And some adults are just they're naturals, and some need more hand holding. And I think you know, um, there are definitely different steps. I always like to talk about personal branding in 3D, right? So it's really like th three dimensional because you want to develop a strong and really authentic personal brand. This isn't about being someone else. This is not about being someone who you think your audience wants to be. So I basically take CEOs through three different steps. And one is, is discovery, right? Like really being reflective, being self-aware, right. identifying, you know, what are your strengths? What are your values? What is your expertise? And then the second D is 
is development. So that's where, and excuse my marketing jargon, but that's when you want to develop the marketing assets of, of an individual because you want to make sure you're portraying them as a thought leader, a subject matter expert. So within that, it's like with some CEOs, well, if they want to be on the speaking circuit, well, of course, develop a speaker's bio. There, there always has to be like a, a video component because for them to get speaking gigs or media coverage for that matter, you want to sure. see how they look in front of, of a camera. And, you know, you also want to make sure that they have a strong online presence and they're also developing not good, but not good content, but it's gotta be great content. I always talk about like magnetic content. So it's like kind of, it just like draws people in. And, you know, the last part of the, of the, 3D is, is delivery. And you and I both know more than ever, each one of us, CEO down, we all have to be our own news channel. Yep. And, and it's also communications works best. You can't just turn on the volume and then walk away. So you need this constant drumbeat, you know? And so whether it's public speaking, uh, media coverage, you know, you want to consistently get yourself out there. You want to engage with your audience, share expertise. I think overall, you know, just building that personal brand, it requires, first of all, a high level of, of commitment. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it could be labor intensive, but consistency and authenticity. No, absolutely. I mean, it does sound somewhat labor intensive. I'm wondering if you find, like we've found that sometimes CEOs question the time spent on that. Obviously, they have teams that can help. They have agencies that can yes. help. But, yes, uh, yes, you, you, yes, yes, yes. It's it's just, yes, absolutely. Because most of most of this, they can delegate out to their teams. And, you know, they, they have their social media team. But I still do think that the discovery work and, and, you know, the, the messaging um, has to be authentic to them. And so um, that's, that's uh, where they really need to participate in the discovery section more than, than anything, because our job is, and you and I both know is to make it as painless as possible for, for our clients and our CEOs and business owners and let them do what they do best, which is, which is running their business. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so let's take it down a few levels to employees. And I'd say both for the C-suite and employees, um, well, they may be wondering, I mean, what is the connection? First of all, the employees may wonder, you know, okay, I understand I have to have a personal brand, but why should I support the company's brand necessarily? But what is the connection? Why should they be brand ambassadors? And how can they, you know, build their own personal brand, yet at the same time help support the company's goals? That's, and, and and you know what? The lines are so blurred right now. I love that question because it's, it, and it's not an easy one to address, but I'll start out by saying that, you know, and I'm sure you've seen it, that research shows that having employees as brand ambassadors is really good for the bottom line. And I'm I've sure. been doing more speaking, and these are some multinational companies going in and speaking to the employees about employee branding. The interesting thing is like different companies have different mindsets. Like I just did, uh, you know, I don't want to mention the company name, but I just did a talk, uh, you know, 5,000 person multinational company. And the woman that was heading up the program, she said, you know, I don't want you to you know, to impart on our employees, like how to use social media, how to leverage it, like in a way that, that they would get another job. But Oh, good point. Right, right, right. But think about it. But what we want you to do is like help them use it so they can get noticed for a promotion or for that next really cool project. So I thought that was like, that was really interesting. But if you think about it, like when employees share their experience with the company, it just it adds relatability, authenticity to the brand message. And, you know, you and I both know very well the word amplification and sure. 
it's, it's all about like an eyeball play, the more eyeballs, right? So if the employees are pushing out some, some company news or messaging to their network, they're reaching more eyeballs through their personal networks and social media platforms. And so when you can, it's it's essentially, it's it's helping to build a strong employer brand. And, and what will also happen, it's gonna boost morale, engagement, and it also retains and attracts talent, which we all know is, is critical these days. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, a couple of questions. Um, first of all, each, employee is an individual the c-suite too they have their own personality their own characteristics is it important to try to find ways to connect the company brand values with the personal brands or to one hundred thousand percent yes okay. yes yes and that's why it's really important you know there's really got to be um clear communication clear open communication transparency about a company's vision, their values, their goals, because you need to build the employee's connection to the brand. And so a lot of times, especially in big companies, there's there's almost like if, and, and I've, I've seen this, if you ask, if you ask like an employee, like, tell me like, what is the essence of, of the company that you work for? They stumble a little bit, right? Because they, they, and it's not their fault, but I just think, you know, a, again, the, the C executive suite is not necessarily communicating this effectively right. with their, with their staff. Well, I guess to internal communications as well. I mean, that's a, not a good thing if, you know, um, the employees can't talk about the brand, what it stands for. Um, but how do you, I guess, how do you um, make it happen? Does it happen organically? Is there some way to empower, encourage? employees to get involved with connecting their, their personal brand to the company brand. Um, before you answer, I mean, I don't know how you feel. I'm not really, I don't know if it works so well to tell them they have to get involved in that or have to be pushing that. But what do you think? I mean, are there good ways to encourage them? I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, you can't, you can't force employees to to become like to advocate for your brand, but you can certainly encourage it. I think you've also got to offer them tools and resources. So, you know, you want to provide training. So it could be in the way of workshops or maybe there's some kind of mentorship program. And, and you know, they they need to understand again, like what are what are the the sticky or magnetic, you know, messages of, of the company. And I also think there's some companies and, and I've worked with, they also have actual like almost physical resources. So there'll be social media guidelines for their employees, or there'll be like content libraries, because you also uh, want to make it easy for them to be able to share brand, um, you know, sure. brand relevant content. You know, you want to give them with the tools. I also think the direction that we're taking right now, and, and I believe we're going to see, the, and we're starting to see it now, but we'll continue to see this, is actual like employee ambassador programs where there there's a real structure around it and you know what the bottom line is the bottom line is like think about human behavior we all want to feel recognized so i think when you can get employees involved in in decision making it makes them feel valuable it makes them feel invested in the company's success and when their opinions matter they're more likely to be brand ambassadors. So I think, you know, you just have to get inside their head. You want to recognize, you want to reward them for, for their contributions if they are advocating for their brand, and then perhaps give them further incentives. Well, I guess it's also a good barometer of the company culture and morale. If uh, people don't want to get involved, if for some reason they're feeling, you know, not too happy, then that's not a good thing. So if they're not... No. No, it's, it, you know what, it's, it's not a good thing. And, and I have to, I, have you ever heard this term? And it's, it's out there a lot. It's called meaningful work. Yeah, I think I've heard okay, that, so, but so I haven't read it for too much. So maybe you can explain. Well, well, you know, it's, it's interesting. So my younger daughter, um, she, she is a consultant and um, she, she said to me, you know, because 
of course I'm into branding. Mom, can you help me for my company come up with a name of a program that, you know, that <laughs> uh, like for meaningful work. And I really like, I had heard the term, but I didn't really know what it was. And I Googled it and I was like astounded. Like, like a lot of companies on a quarterly basis, they are sending surveys out to their employees. They want their employees to be happy. They want their employees to find that their work is meaningful to them. And I think that's one component. You know, it's like, if you have employees that find their work meaningful to them, they're going to be more engaged, they're going to be more productive, and they're going to be brand advocates for the company, which will in turn, again- Good for business, yeah. Good for business. Absolutely. Somewhat controversial though, um, because I guess it gets to the whole area, and I don't know if you have thoughts on this, about, um, I guess, politics, about polarization, about companies getting involved in the culture wars, and should they be taking positions on certain topics? Um, I don't know. Do you have any feeling? I I feel that <clears throat> it's so interesting. I feel that, that that should be avoided at all costs. So I have a very yeah. strong, a strong opinion. It's, you know what, you always have to look at like, what's you know like like look at look at what the end result like ask the what if questions if i put this out there like what are some possible outcomes that could happen look if you feel that it's all going to be positive go with it but often often it's it's not yeah you're going to alienate alienate some group and i mean just like you're saying you don't want to get involved in the conversation about politics, sports, religion, you know, a brand in some ways is a conversation with the market. And why get involved in sensitive things if you don't have to? Now, some of your customers may wonder, where do you stand? And I want to align with brands that have certain values. So I don't know if there's an easy answer there to satisfy everybody. You it's know, like it's, a- it's, it's very, it's very difficult. Um, you know, you see some, some CEOs like take like really put their their stake in the ground about politics in a really big way. And I forget his his name, but the guy that does the uh, the mattress commercials, he's a Trump supporter. Oh, okay. I forget, no. but you right. I think it was a my pillow guy. Is that the my Th- pillow that's guy? That's it. That's it. Right. Yeah, that's Mike it. Okay. That's it. I mean, that's like that is really screaming from the rooftops, and that has created a lot of of negative chatter and also some people who are not trumpers that are saying i i used to buy you know his pillows but never again so you just you have to be very mindful i think that's a really good example yeah and in the tech world elon musk who seemed to be people couldn't quite peg where he was politically but increasingly uh it seems like he is very far on the right and i don't know somewhat yeah. of a hot mess I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's 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 again I think neutrality is is always the best way to go and and it's it's so interesting because throughout my career and you know we run different shops there have been many political candidates ha- who have come to me to represent them but I 100% of the time have have turned them down. By the How way, you remember are, uh... One of our classmates uh, made it pretty big in politics, but we'll talk more about Peter, that. Peter Harkin, right. who I, I know Peter very well. And and here's the thing. It's not to say that, for example, we, we, we don't do political campaigns per se, but we do represent like one of our clients is Westchester County um, Economic Development. We also, the picture behind me, we were the agency of record for rebuilding. Right. You you know that well of from course. Rock County. What a beautiful bridge and what so, a beautiful picture. So we we were hired for the eighteen month communication campaign for rebuilding the Tappan Zee Bridge. Did wow. these things get political? Yes, but I, I also believe you always you have to take the high road. You've got to get the facts out, and you know you just have to be really responsive and you know i like for example westchester county government 
um, they are, first of all, it's like they came to the rescue of so many businesses in Westchester during COVID, you know, through different grant programs. So that has been, you know, I would say besides the, the Tappan Zee Bridge, which is now, you know, the Mario Cuomo Bridge, one of the biggest achievements I feel in the agency, but so rewarding has been the work with Westchester County government because they saved so many businesses, restaurants and, and, and hair salons and just businesses that were really struggling during the, during the pandemic with, um, with just different resources and grants. And so many of those businesses are still here today because of them. Well, maybe that's a good segue to just telling us more about your agency, your, apart from the one you just mentioned, the types of clients you service, um, you know, what your services are. Sure. Well, we started out as, as a traditional public relations firm uh, because that's that's my background. I don't know if you know, but I had a short stint at CBS. It was actually, it was a joint venture between CBS and 20th Century Fox. So it was CBS Fox video. So we had okay. all the amazing music product oh, and fun. we had 20th Century Fox films. And we also had a licensing deal with the NBA. I started out working in international marketing and then um, at a time where we had a new CEO and he downsized the company what's the first department that will go? It was public relations. And I was I was quite upset because my job was like doing a lot of number crunching between how the videos were performing in the UK versus Japan. So I would always make my way to the PR department and I would say, what are you working on? Oh, we're doing like a Mick Jagger world premiere screening downtown. And so interestingly enough, the woman that headed up the public relations department, she started her own agency, took CBS Fox on as her first client. I ran into her at an event and um, she said, you know, I know you have no experience in public relations. She said, but I could just tell it's in your DNA. Meet me for breakfast. And so that started my career in public relations. So imagine that like I, there was no there was no internet yet and i remember because we had a lot of events and this first event was with julius irving dr j and okay. so she said okay write a press release and i'm like a press release what's that <laughs> we used to have those big binders remember them of course the big you binders go to the web and just uh pull up a right. template right right she, no, no chat GPT at the time. She pushed the book <laughs> to me and she's like, here, the second day on the job, I'll never forget this. She, uh, she said, Stacy, she said at the event last night, this was Dr. J's like world premiere screening. It was at a restaurant 2020 in the city. She said, there was a reporter from Forbes there. And she said, He'll never, you know, he'll never remember not meeting you. So just call him up and pitch him on doing on doing uh, a story on MBA licensed product. And I Perfect. was like, pitch? What does pitch mean? And I remember we were in a loft and we shared an office. And I remember shaking like jelly. Could you imagine? Because you being- I remember my, my first pitches. Like, right. You want me to nudge somebody? <laughs> right. Like I, you know, it, it's, it's like, I was shaking like jelly inside. I, I remember that feeling, but that was like my first placement. Ooh, uh, Forbes. That's a yeah, good place to start. It was, it was start. my first placement. And, um, you know, I think I was born a schmoozer. But, <laughs> and, um, that helps. And, and so it was great though, because I had experiencing her start an agency. I was with her for a couple of years and then went on to start co-communications. And so a word about co-communications, a lot of people say, oh, you named your agency Cohen, like, like after Cohen, I'm like, no, if you look at the word co, it's the Latin derivative of with. So that's like all what I'm about. It's all about collaboration. It's working exactly. with people for the best possible results. So again, I run a very collaborative agency. Um, a lot of my staff have been with me for 10 plus years. Wow. I can proudly say that about a lot of my clients. In fact, 
my first client, like my first real client in, in the agency was the Boys and Girls Club, a nonprofit, and had them for 18 years on an ongoing retainer, which which is very unusual. 18 years. 18 that's, years. That's quite a run. In, in agency land. And um, the great story is, it's kind of full circle because I'm donating hundreds, probably thousands of, of my book brand up to uh, Boys and Girls Clubs across America, mm -hmm. the Y Girls Inc., to different youth organizations. That's wild. Uh, speaking of your book and... I don't know, your personal brand. Have you found there's a tension between the work you're doing or maybe there's tension others need to be cognizant of, especially in our field, you are, between your work branding yourself and then your work toward your client. Do you find that sometimes it's a conflict or it's challenge, challenge to strike that balance? Yes, it's, it's almost as if, well, first of all, I have to say in the past year, I'm easily working like 60 to 80 hours a week because I haven't really dialed down from co-communications. So the additional 20 hours has been on, you know, on, on the book. I think where I'm conflicted and you and I spoke about it before is that I'm so much, and I'm a very like, you know, I'm a very personable person and I can work a room, but I'm so much more comfortable putting my clients in the spot. Right. Right. And even to the point, like every so often I'll have like a journalist call me and say, hey, I'd love to interview you. Co-communications has such a great culture. And I'll say, thank you so much. But, you know, I'd much rather you interview my client company, ABC, because check out what they are doing, you know, for their clients, you know, so I'll always like push it away from me. So I think one of the challenge of the book is is getting comfortable getting myself more out there well it sounds like a must read again we'll have a link to it in the show notes is there anything else you want to share um before we wrap well i just want to share how proud i am of of you for your incredible career in public relations because i have so enjoyed watching you throughout the years and and I just also I love talking about great content like you 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 like you. put out really Thank really you. good content so I was so excited when you contacted me to be on your program because I I just knew that we would have such a great conversation and and so we did no that is great I it's I'm so happy that you Decided to come on the podcast and uh, great to see you again. We'll have to get together, as we were saying, it's been too long. Um, wish you continued success with the book and with your agency. And uh, let's keep in touch. And right back at you. And I think you should write a book too. And that can be another <laughs> oh, conversation. <laughs> you're right. You're not the first to tell me that. I got to get, yeah, get so, to So we'll, we'll have that conversation and, and I will give you some shortcuts to the world of publishing. I'd appreciate that. Let's do that. All right. Stacey Thank Russell you so Cohen. Great much. speaking with you. Fantastic having you on, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.